Hi, my name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So I'm going to look at some of the high resolution photography that I took of the Vega alum experiment, which is aluminium anode and the cathode plate down the bottom here, which is also of aluminium. This is a sheet of aluminium and this is actually part of an old aluminium door handle. This uh, sequence of uh, images that I'm going to show you was after we had run the reactor for a good, good period of time with just residual air and uh, potentially a little bit of hydrogen and later on uh, we added uh, some propane to uh, show what that did. and. The ability of the camera that we're using here, the Sony Alpha with the uh, very bright lens, allows us to very specifically focus areas. So in this case, we are focusing here on the anode and you can see we get a lot of detail there. And you can see that it's a little bit blackened and that would be carbon deposits coming from the propane in this case. But most of the action occurs in this bottom area, which is closest to the cathode. Uh, but interestingly, it didn't seem to melt much. There wasn't really uh, much melting going on. Uh, clearly, there appears to be some sort of oxidation going on and some transfer potentially of ions from one part of the electrical conductive circuit, uh, the cathode maybe, to the anode and vice versa. Um, but we will determine those when we look at this uh, and examine it in more detail later. Anyway, I wanted to show you a couple of things that you may have seen in the videos uh, or you will see in some of the videos uh, of these tests. And the first thing is uh, this bright hard cutoff line here, which really looks a little bit odd. Uh, there's actually almost a second line here. And I have deduced probably, most likely, that this is due to the um, window that I'm actually looking through and the light coming from this uh, event here uh, reflecting off the window and casting back light onto the aluminium here. Isn't that, that this appears transparent? It kind of gives the, the optical illusion of it being transparent, but it is not that. Okay, so we have another one here and you can see two cathode spots here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look into some of these cathode spots that I've highlighted here. The first one here is interesting because it, it almost has these bubbles. So we'll have a look at that quickly. I'm not convinced they are what they may be. It might just be that the fact that we're focused on the end of the anode here and that that means that this is out of focus. So it's giving us these uh, features, but uh, they certainly are um, very regular between the two events here. So is it an optical thing? I think it probably is, um, but we'll have a look at that and I'm going to go and highlight the other ones of uh, these here and uh, look at this under closer examination using the raw feature when you are observing these images. Now, these are Sony raw images. They're quite large. Uh, they do have lossless compression and uh, that brings them down to about 50 megabytes an image you can see here. And you can also see the speed at which these images occurred. And so um, we have a range of different speeds here. So many of them were taken at 1 250th of a second. This one's, uh, for instance, 1 1,000th of a second. Uh, these are 1 400th of a second, 1 200th of a second. And this allows us to take a very small time slice, but also uh, by varying the f-stop and varying the ISO, we can look right into the plasma along with the 14 or so bits of dynamic range. We can really get 
a lot of insight as to what's going on. So many of these I took at one thousand, one one thousandth of a second, except these last ones here. So I'm going to have a look at those. Um, I can go up here and select one and open in camera raw. Hopefully it's going to give me all those. Okay. So here is the first one that I was talking about. And you can see that this is one spot. So with most cameras, uh, this is kind of what you would see. You would just see like a, uh, these bright bloom areas. Okay. And you can see that this is 1 250th of a second. And this is uh, F7.1. And it's on a uh, Sigma 24 to 70 at 70 millimeters. So we are zoomed in to 70 millimeters and an ISO of 125. So this is often what you just see or what you can perceive with many cameras. Uh, with the eye, you can actually see it a little bit more, but it's, it's there and gone in a flash. You, you can't really see any specific resolution of what's going on. But here, uh, there's a couple of events and uh, they seem to have these dome structures around them. Um, and here also, but I'm, I'm unconvinced that this isn't just because it's out of focus. Because as I said, it, this end is in focus here, as you can see. All right, now moving on, um, these explosions, these uh, cathode spots, these potentially coulombic explosions, they have quite an interesting feature. You can see it here and here. We're going to look at several of these where it kind of has a very dark uh, blue bit in the center. And then around the outside, you've got a, a kind of rainbow, but on one half that's facing the camera. Now, is this some sort of chromatic aberration? Is this some sort of uh, lens artifact? I don't know, but it does seem fairly consistent. And in this case, you can see that the um, aluminium here is actually quite in focus. Uh, you can actually see a lot of detail on that bottom sheet. So this isn't a case of, uh, you can see that now we're not focusing on the uh, anode here. It's very out of focus and we are definitely focusing down on the cathode. So this isn't a case of what we saw in the previous image where we had these uh, blurry bits here because we were focused on this. Okay, so we are now focused on the uh, cathode. And we can play around with this uh, by changing the exposure. And you can see even with pulling the exposure right down has this very discreet structure. Now is this uh, an inverted mushroom, a birdie? Uh, is this the shock wave of things coming towards the camera? I don't know, but it definitely has this very different deep, is it a, um, is it uh, violet uh, going out through to, through to the red here? Um, why would that be? Why would the things be red on the outside? These are questions that you might like to consider and ask yourselves and come up with an idea. But as you change the exposure, it kind of basically gets lost. Um, oh, the contrast there. Okay. So as shot. Uh, so what are these structures and why are they like that is the question I have for you. Uh -huh. so. Changing the contrast here, change the exposure, okay. It's a definite thing, and it, actually, if we go through to other ones, um, they're not always so clear, but uh, here, this one, now is this in focus? It's not so in focus, actually. Where are we focusing in this image? Not there. We sort of, uh, yeah, we're focusing maybe here, and it's starting to come out of focus. So where this explosion is, this is out of focus, but we are seeing the same kind of effect, but this time it's out of focus, and there seems to be two events occurring uh, within this one one thousandth of a second. So this is uh, two events, or is it, is it a single event? Is this a flux loop and two ends of it? Um, I don't know, but clearly 
it has this same kind of structure where you have these darker areas here and this curved section here. Is this a birdie? I don't know. Um, let's have a look here again. And this one we are focused somewhere in this back area. And actually what, what I did here is I had a, a camera light that I shone through the other window into the chamber. And in this instance, if we come in here, what is this? I mean, it, it really does look like a hemisphere. Um, again, this is not so is in focus as this first one over here that we looked at, uh, where it really was quite striking. The, uh, the actual structure is quite clear. Okay, and we're more in focus on that one. But uh, in this one, I don't know, it's, it's relatively similar, isn't it? Um, but it's, it very much looks like it's a half dome now. It could be, it could be an artifact in the camera, but one has to ask why is this particular shape not a whole ring? Um, I don't know. Uh, I would seek people's views on this. Okay. And uh, this one actually is, again, is different. This, one, uh, this one's f2.8, but um, 1 200th of a second. Where are we focused? We seem to be focused sometime, somewhere in the middle of the cathode there. So this is out of focus. And it, be, because of the speed of this flash, it, it occurred in the tail end of the rolling shutter on the camera here. And again, you can see this is out of focus. Uh, but it's definitely got this structure uh, going on. So let's change the contrast on that. Uh, it's dark blue area, violet maybe, going out. And obviously you can work out that, that this is in the plane of the camera. Oh, sorry, of the uh, cathode plane yeah this is the plane going away from you and so this is on the surface and having this overall glow but this is the core uh, with this kind of dome kind of structure there let's have a look to see if we've got any more here again where are we in focus here it's kind of like definitely not focused there are we focused down the bottom don't know but uh, again you're seeing this half section here and if we change the exposure the same kind of thing it's like that have we got any others yes yes oh, these are very clear okay so this is one two thousand five hundredth of a second you can see up here one two thousand five hundredth of a second again f 2.8 so if it's in focus it's very in focus um, and we can see here um, now, you could imagine there is a discharge going on between here and here, the anode and the cathode, but it very much has this distinct feature here. They're like little UFOs that have landed on me. They're definitely a violet. It's like, it's like a little rainbow, little rainbow. You know, a violet here. This is definitely violet coming through the blue, yellow, orange, and so forth. So it has all the colors, <laughs> which kind of, it kind of suggests maybe it's some sort of chromatic effect in the lens uh, with maybe the intensity, I don't know. Um, and what do we have here? This is one where, again, this is one four thousandth of a second. So a very, short duration here it looks like there's two spots here and this might be a, some sort of flux loop between them or it might have jumped but there we go we've got the violet going through to the red at the oval glow here and of course as i said if you expose this up it just looks like a cathode spot <laughs> there's no definition of any sort okay but here you pull it right back, you get some sort of substructure going on. Okay. Right. Boom, boom.
what are these things? What are they telling us? What are they telling us? Is it really, really just a lens artifact? This one really is quite in focus because this is relatively in focus, so it's giving us good detail here. Of course, this is a different spot, uh, caught in a different state actually. And it's extremely in focus actually, the area around this. Let's play with the exposure on this. Ah, there, there. Okay, so you couldn't see much there, it's just a very real sphere. But if we pull that back, we can see that there is something going on in there. And is this one of these loops going on? Very, very defined zone around that, isn't there? It's quite nice, actually. So I just undo that, go back to where we were. And then we have these two spots here, this one and this one over here. Very, very defined structure. Okay, so what are these? Is it a chromatic aberration? Is it what a birdie, which we're actually seeing the explosion of a magneto toro electrical cluster? Is it a columbic explosion? I think as we see sequences of video uh, and other data from these experiments it will become clearer what they are, but for now, this is one for you to consider. What is going on with these half dome structures? Just to show you, in each case, uh, if I change the exposure back so we can see the platform, there's the anode, there's the cathode. Uh, yeah. If I move the exposure back, you can see. Anyway, that's basically it. It's, it's clearer on these images because I've got the Ill illumination of the whole area as well. There we go. Very, very, very distinct. So thank you very much for your time and I'll see you in the next video.